Richard. When we had you on the show last year, I had no idea what you were really up to. I mean, how are you feeling? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you terrified? Oh, uh, incredibly excited. And uh, yeah, certainly a lot's gone on since the last time we we, um, we, we had a chance to have a conversation. But uh, yeah, I mean, being able to, you know, command the first all civilian mission to space, uh, totally a dream come true, truly a, tri a childhood dream come true. And that we're going to be able to do an awful lot of good along the way. I mean, you know, biggest fundraising campaign in the 59 year history of St. Jude Children's Hospital. We've got a, uh, an a incredible crew selection process to make sure we have the right people representing us on this mission, including identifying a great entrepreneur to, um, uh, to represent one of the four crew members as well. So very exciting time. I, I know you're hoping to raise something like $300 million for St. Jude, but are you at all concerned? about the risk? I mean, there have to be some butterflies. No, really, I'm not. First, uh, like immensely confident in what um, Elon and the SpaceX team uh, have delivered. This isn't a new endeavor. I mean, you know, you have to keep in mind the SpaceX team had the foresight 20 years ago to embark on this um, commercial uh, space uh, initiative. So, um, I mean, this is the company that brought human spaceflight back to the United States after nearly a decade since the space shuttle has been retired. Um, those are human rated uh, spacecraft by NASA, leveraging their 60 years of experience and lessons learned. And now you've got a company that's sending rockets up all the time and landing them on ships in the middle of the ocean. I mean, incredibly impressive. So very confident in the, uh, the technology, confident in the training. And, and even just compared to some of my own prior adventures, I was in Antarctica just a year ago. I mean, if you get appendicitis there, that's a pretty big deal. Um, I've flown air shows. I actually think that this is maybe more on the safer side of some of the uh, endeavors I've gone on. Okay, so what are you doing to prepare for this particular mission? What is the training like? Uh, how much time are you spending doing that training? Yeah, so, um, I mean, right now we're taking everything in milestones. So first step, we got to figure out who the crew is. <laughs> Uh, so just a couple days ago, we kicked off uh, inspiration4.com, which is our mission website. This is where we're inviting the public to, you know, log on, participate, uh, and help us figure out who our crew members are going to be. You know, we have an open seat for someone to make a donation to St. Jude uh, Children's Research Hospital, and they'll get selected at the end of the month and get fitted for a spacesuit. And you got this great entrepreneur selection process as part of our Shift for Shop um, commerce platform to uh, identify that next great business uh, leader and elevate them to the stars. And that will be our fourth crew member. So we've got to get through that. Um, we've got to shatter this $200 million record for, for St. Jude as part of the fundraising. And then we're going to roll right into training. Um, and the idea is uh, it's going to be uh, intense. We are going to draw upon uh, what NASA um, has you know, developed over the last 60 years. Uh, but we're not going to space station. We're not doing any spacewalks. So that actually narrows the curriculum a little bit. It certainly allows me to pay attention to my responsibilities at Shift 4 while also preparing for this voyage. So, look, uh, everybody wants to know how much you paid for this flight. You said, you know, you want to break that $200 million record for, for St. Jude. I mean, is, is, is what you paid for that seat somewhere around half that, more, less? Yeah, so this is a very private uh, transaction uh, between myself individually and, uh, and SpaceX. But what I can say is, um, you know, between the $200 million fundraising effort we have Saint, to St. Jude, the $100 million that I've already contributed to the, uh, to the fundraising effort for St. Jude, we, we are going to raise more money and achieve far more good than what the mission in itself is going to cost. So what's it been like working with Elon Musk? How much interaction have you had with him? Um, you know, really not that much because he's a pretty busy guy. Um, you know, he's got a handful of companies <laughs> right now and he's changing the world in more than one way at once, which is which is pretty incredible. I, I can't say having conversations with him uh, first, um, I, I can't even say we have an aligned vision. I share his vision and the vision he's had for a long time, which is, you know, um, humankind is just far more interesting uh, when people can go and journey among the stars. I mean, I think we all look at, you know, whether you're a Star Trek fan or a Star Wars fan, you watch that sh one of those shows or movies and you imagine yourself in one of those spacecraft, right? And uh, and that's a world I think a lot of people would like to live in. And, you know, Elon and SpaceX are, are helping us get there. And Inspiration4 is one step along the way in that journey. Uh, and it allows us to make that kind of progress in space while also like, you know, tackling some of the issues we have here on Earth. But uh, totally share his vision in that. Uh, very uh, big brain, cerebral person. His mind's definitely moving a million miles an hour. 
Uh, listening to Elon Musk on Clubhouse over the weekend, he was asked if he'd let his kids go to Mars, and he said, eh, they're not really interested. Um, I'm curious what your family thinks about your mission, and, you know, maybe you're not nervous, but are they? Uh, so my wife is uh, not surprised at all. Um, you know, we've been together an awful long time. Uh, she used to, uh, you know, sit in the back seat during my early flying lessons, you know, nearly like 20 years ago. She's flown in the fighter jets. She's seen me at air shows. Uh, she knows this is part of my DNA uh, to want to go out and seek some of life's, you know, greatest challenges and such. So she wasn't too surprised. Um, and, uh, and my kids, well, I, I didn't really kind of fully explain it all to them until recently. They did overhear me talking to my wife, uh, and they tried to break the secret at school, told their teacher that their dad's going to become an astronaut. So we had to squelch that pretty early on because, you know, there's a lot of secrecy, at least initially on that. But I, I think they're excited. I sure hope someday that this becomes so accessible, so affordable that my kids and other kids can, you know, can go and uh, go to space. Because right now, to be a NASA astronaut, you have a better chance of getting hit by lightning. Um, would you go to or move to Mars if that opportunity happened in our lifetime or let your kids do that? <laughs> well, I think we got to go one step at a time, right? We got to get this mission right. And, and I know <laughs> I've said it before, but like it's a huge responsibility because if this goes wrong, it's going to set back the timeline for everyone else. And that timeline can happen really fast. You know, if you look at, you know, Charles Lindbergh's solo okay. flight across the Atlantic, um, you know, that, uh, that was one person, one individual, very costly, goes across the Atlantic. 12 years later, Pan Am has right. transit commercial service for everybody, right? So we got to get this right so everybody else can follow. 